Hello everybody. Uh, this talk is about how to design and implement a good TCP server with a Tornado framework. So we're not going too deeply in the network programming here, uh, but we more or less focus on how to use existing library. In this case, it's actually the Tornado uh, to achieve a scalable and the high performance TCP server. So my talk is divided into four parts. The I will start with the design aspect where we try to find out what we want to achieve and discuss some techniques as we should consider when we design a server. Uh, then we go through the system architecture and the system flow. In the third part, we learn a bit about the implementation. I will uh, try to introduce some tips and the tips we use in the server. And the presentation ends with a small demo of the instant messaging server. Okay, uh, first part is design aspect, but before um, we go on, I would like to give you some background information. Like, what is the TCP IP protocol? Uh, we all know that it's a connection oriented protocol, uh, which means a connection needs to be established first uh, until the application between two sides finish sending the message. And how about TCP server? Uh, TCP server actually is tied to a specific local port and it starts listening the incoming connection. So when the client connects to the port, the server accepts the connection and waiting for the incoming data. Uh, data usually come in chunk. It means the full logic package may not arrive at the same time. And the server may or may not respond to the client. And uh, the client or the server can close the connection. Another thing I would like to discuss uh, before we move on is the performance and scalability. When we will talk about scale, they often talk about the performance. They are similar, but actually it's not the same. Uh, performance refers to ability of a server to serve amount of requests or serve amount of user. Uh, meanwhile, the scalability refers to the characteristic of a system uh, to increase the performance by adding more resources. Uh, very often, people think that if we need to serve more people, we should add more servers. And I can give one example. For example, we have the Apache server, which can serve around, uh, for example, it's a 1,000 transactions per second. And if the transaction is short, for example, one second per transaction, so we have around uh, 1,000 1, uh, concurrency connections. Uh, so, for this one, the Apache server handle quite well. But if the connection is take longer, like 10 seconds per connection, so for one TPS, we have around 10,000 concurrent connection. At the time, the Apache server, the performance drop a lot. Okay, let's say you upgrade the hardware to make it uh, uh, double the processor speed. Uh, what happened? We get the double performance at the beginning. Uh, but it still cannot serve 10,000 concurrent connection. Okay, let's continue doubling it. Okay, uh, we have a time performance, six, 16 time performance. It's great, but it still cannot got 10,000 concurrent connection. So performance is not the same as scalability. Okay, so right, uh, let's move to the design target. What do we want from our TCP server? I picked up the most four important points here. Uh, we want it's a high performance, but we also want it scalable. And it must be stable and robust. Uh, more than that, it must be very easy for developer to add the business logic. Okay? So we want a scalable server, but how? The example about the Apache server uh, is actually known as a C10K problem. A decade engineer tackle with how to handle more than 10,000 concurrent connection. That's a great solution for that. Um, when you have more connection, it means the kernel needs to work through the larger list of the socket or the thread. And uh, actually, uh, these days, the kernel is much better. It can provide a um, lookup in constant time. Another problem here is the thread scaling still cannot scale. In Apache, for each time there's connection, it creates a new thread. Uh, but in the modern server like Nginx or Node.js, uh, the server scale using the event driven I.O. which is an asynchronous uh, programming model. 
Uh, okay, we just mentioned about uh, asynchronous uh, programming model. So what's the difference with the traditional way? So for the asynchronous operation, it's block the operation until the operation complete. For asynchronous, uh, you, you basically just tell the system, like you read the data from here, and when it arrives, it's called this function. Meanwhile, you can keep going on other stuff, uh, because the I.O. operation uh, don't block, so you don't need to have spawn a lot of thread or each connection one thread. Okay, but the asynchronous come with a disadvantage. Uh, it's not really easy to implement or it's not easy to read the code. Error handling is much more complicated and the response time are unpredictable. Uh, well, so to scale up, we use a synchronous uh, programming model. So what's the option out there? Uh, I can name the most three popular network library in Python we have. Uh, it is the Tornado, Jivan, and Twisted. Um, Tornado is the first candidate, and actually this is the one we choose for our TCP server. Uh, Tornado is, has become very popular among Python asynchronous library. Uh, actually, there's a PyCon talk about a Tornado I.O. loop. You can take your time and watch it in detail. Uh, in this slide, I just summarize some key points here. Is uh, uh, Tornado is claimed as a great framework if you need to handle a large number of connections. Uh, and it can scale up to 10,000 of open connections, ideal for applications that require long life connection. Uh, and it's very simple, easy to use, uh, good docu documentation. Uh, the code is very beauty and clean, and it has a lot of library support. It's, uh, it can work with pure Python compiler. It's PyPy. It sounds good, but uh, there's many other Python libraries out there. So why Tornado is better? Let's make some comparison. Uh, for example, we compare with the uh, Twisted. Uh, it's actually uh, also very good candidate. Uh, it's actually it's very similar to Tornado. Uh, is uh, both use the callback style and have a built-in, which is a pure Python event loop powered by EPO in the Unix. Uh, but the only problem is it uh, seems much more complicated than Tornado, and it's of not, not it's not only offer the callback, but it's offer the defer, which I think is just the same way as the go to in C. Uh, you have a, a lot of problem when you do programming or do the testing. And when other programmers uh, read uh, your code, actually they just want to kill you because it's very complicated. Uh, another is uh, Jivan. Re Jivan is actually the very new library. Uh, it is a coroutine based Python networking library that you greenlight to provide a high level synchronous API on the top of the event loop. So basically, it's just like object the callback. It uh, helps you to write the uh, synchronous code and st still get the good performance, uh, uh, still get the good scalability. However, uh, we got quite a number of trouble with the Jivan because not many library compatible with the Jivan. And yeah, that's it. And it's tied to the C Python implementation, not support order like PyPy, JTAN. Uh, well, so let, let's look back to our design target. So to make our server scalable, what we try to do is uh, we will use the Tornado for the network component. And to get a high performance, uh, the idea here is we just try to uh, guarantee that uh, we collect the task aside to multiple thread or process. Uh, the problem is the asynchronous, as I mentioned, it's become, it makes your course complicated. So, to make sure it's stable and robust, or it's easy to use or add the business logic, what we do is we try to find out a way uh, that make our uh, find out a way to let the developer to write the business logic in the synchronous code. Okay, so to let to make you more excited, so at the end of the presentation, what I can show you is you can with our TCP server, you can implement a simple instant messaging server with only just 100 lines of code, and the code is actually written in synchronous mode. How about the performance? For example, you have a server with 2 gigabyte memory, 
actually it's, uh, it's have only one gigabyte available and two core processor it can support it's easy to support like 100k connection and 1000 TPS generation per second okay uh, so from the design target and some basic techniques I just show you uh, this lead my this leads me to my next point is the system architecture uh, this is our architecture uh, there's two main modules here the very first one is the network one uh, the network component this network component is run in the single process and contain two servers listening at different ports the first one is connection server uh, what is the is uh, first is, is the non-blocking single thread tornado socket listener uh, it's listen and accept the client connection uh, and if we see the request package it add into the waiting task queue another is a worker server is again is a tornado socket listener and it's maintain the list uh, it's waiting for a list of the worker processor uh, the task is pick up the task people in the waiting task and assign to all the worker. Uh, the second modules uh, in this architecture is the own the worker processor here. This worker processor is the TCP client. Uh, it can be thread or process and it can be in the same or different machine with the network component. Uh, it's connect to the worker server or to get the request after it's processing the request it can send back the request data back to the network modules and the network module will try to send back the data to client so the main idea here is we try to use the network modules as a asynchronous to efficiently uh, control the client connection and we try to convert asynchronous code become the signal through the worker processor to get high performance okay so to give you a better understanding about the architecture uh, let's go through the basic flow so firstly uh, each processor will connect to the worker server and when the processor worker coming up of course there's no task at the beginning so it's add to the idle uh, worker list and when the client made the connection to connection server uh, the network modules will generate a very unique key based on the client IP, client port and the petting number and it keep the mapping in the dictionary to easy to query uh, which client need to send back the data later okay when client send the package to the connection server the connection server will modify the package it's add in the command and the client IP uh, client ID uh, before forwarding the package to the worker processor. So here we have uh, three main tie up commands. The first one is the command connect. This will, uh, when the client made the connection, uh, the module, the network module will auto generate the uh, connect package, which is useful. For example, you want to init the some section data for a new connection. Uh, a similar way for the command disconnect when the client connection disconnect it will tell the worker uh, worker register so it can clear up the section data for normal package from the client the command should be command relay uh, after the package is received and added uh, it can either to add to the waiting task if there is no available worker register or it will directly pass to the one of the worker processor to handle. So after the worker processor finish the uh, finish processing the, the request, it will send back the data to worker server. So based on the client ID in the package, it can, the network module can find out the corresponding client connection and return back the data to the client. Uh, one notice here is we have two kind of command when the worker processor send back the data. Command notify. Command notify means is I still processing the data, but I need to notify another guy. So the worker is not free. Yes, it's just like mid midway uh, processing the data. Or if it's finished the request, it can use a command relay. So it's will say the network module can send back the data and also add the worker to the 
uh, I do work, work a list so later it can get a new task. Uh, so the network modules and the worker processor can run in the same machine, but we also make it can make it the, the cluster. It means we can deploy a multiple machine run worker processor. Uh, most of the time, we just need one network module because the tornado is very powerful uh, library. Uh, it can easily handle ten thousand open connections. So in this picture, I just uh, suggest one of the cluster we have, like we have two network module and a few machine for the worker processor. Okay. Uh, okay. So we get our architecture. So let's move on to the next point is the implementation. Um, firstly, uh, we talk about a network module. Uh, as I mentioned, the network module uses the Tornado. And we all know that Tornado is a synchronous library. And so the question is, it is very complicated to write out, write out the network modules because I just uh, tell us the asynchronous is not easy to implement. Uh, actually, it's super easy if you don't have the callback inside callback. And yeah, it's very straightforward to write out the network modules in our TCP server because we just need to fill up some events. For example, when the client makes connection, we create a connection package, send to worker server, or when the client close the connection. What we need to do, or when the client uh, when we receive a package from client, what we need to do. Okay, so another point I would like to highlight is the some restriction in C Python. Uh, in C Python, we have something called global interpreter lock, or GIL. Is actually the mutex that prevent uh, multi-native threads for executing the Python code as one. Uh, not that uh, the potential blocking like I/O blocking or image processing will not occupy your GIL. It's only the CPU bound. So if your thread, for example, thread one, is uh, re requires a high CPU, uh, it will not release the GIL. Uh, so the thread two. Cannot, cannot acquire the GL, so actually it's run in the single process. Uh, so that's the to the idea like uh, you may have to implement the worker as a multiple thread if your task requires a CPU bar. Yeah. Uh, another thing in the implementation I want to highlight is the partial data transmission. Uh, at the beginning, uh, as I mentioned, that the TCP connection, the 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 full logic package may not arrive at the same time. And uh, the technique most fre fre frequently used is you add in the header. In this case, as in the, the 4 by integer at the beginning of the package to indicate the size of the whole package. So what you do is at the beginning, you just read the first 4 by to know the full size of the package and uh, you try to get the full package before pass into the higher layer. Okay, uh, besides partial data transmission, uh, there's some tips uh, I want to share is uh, if uh, on the worker processor or network module run in the same machine, you may not need to use the PCP IP socket, you can do Unix socket, uh, which is much uh, lighter and faster uh, why? Because the unique domain socket is now that you are executed in the same machine. So it can avoid some checking or operation like routing the package. Uh, another highlight here is the keep alive. Uh, keep alive is can useful for when you need to advise when the peer dies before it can notify you. Uh, of course, uh, most of the time you want to set the keep alive, but the key point here you need to but mind about the option we have. Uh, of course, you don't want to like get notified when the peer only connect uh, when the peer only disconnect for one or two hours, or you don't want to set the interval is so so short, so you get a lot of traffic, redundant traffic. Yeah. So just feels like I mentioned about the network modules. So now we move a bigger picture. Is uh, uh, let's move. Uh, let's talk about how the message transmission between the client and the worker processor. Uh, 
um, okay each package from the client uh, is have this format this is the the size of the package the size of the header the header buffer and the body uh, the package size is to solve a problem with the partial data transmission we just mentioned the size of the header tell you the uh, the header size and what you need to do is you deserialize the header and the header structure we have here is contain of uh, a few attributes uh, it's, it's the ID, person, command, result and timestamp in here the most important one is the command uh, because based, based on the command uh, you will know which structure to deserialize the body for example if the command is the login command so you just use the locking structure to deserialize the the body package. Or uh, it's a chatting, you use chatting structure or it's an update update structure. Okay, so for each worker processor, um, if you have something called worker processor manager class, uh, what is the it's maintain a dictionary of the work of the processor handler. And each processor handler need to be register its action and the request structure and reply structure. So when the package come in, the worker processor manager first it will uh, read the header in the client package, uh, get the command, and based on the command it will find the corresponding handler. And because inside the handler you know that what is the request structure and reply structure, it can uh, deserialize the body and pass back to the function. So uh, it will process the data and it get back the result. After that, the worker manager can construct a rely package and return back to client. So what's, what is the nice thing here is uh, after you have the worker processor manager, on all the work, worker, you can return code in the synchronous mode. Here is one example. Like if you want to write a login handler, uh, the easy way is just to register the function with the command login with the processor manager indicate that the commit uh, structure is login request and the return package is the login reply and inside here you can write a single code okay okay well finally we get here for a demo so for this demo I would like to show you a very simple instant messaging server uh, the client can 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 register his username and can send the message to another username. And through this demo, what I want I would like to show you is uh, you can see how easy we can use our TCB server to write out a business lo logic, and we also get a very good performance. Okay, let's let's see for a demo. Uh, let's see. First, I bring up my server here. Okay. Maybe now I, I move on. Okay. Maybe I should change it to duplicate. Uh, let me make it duplicate yeah, display to make it easier. Okay. Okay, we have one server here. Uh, is 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 not really power server. This just have two core and uh, one one gigabyte RAM available. And uh, okay, uh, this is our folder structure for the instant message server. Maybe we use uh, Vim to easy to see. So you can see this on the left hand side. Um, we have gtcp this folder contain on the core library file which is the network modules i just show you uh, and on the im server uh, structure here we have a config file uh, which is uh, you set like listen at which part and worker listen at what part and you set some some config like some keep like option time out counting okay uh, you also uh, okay, for the CLI protocol, we use the Google protobuf. So in here, you define what's the command from the client. It's a command list, 
uh, you define the result constant and here's the package header uh, explained inside the slide and for example for user register this is the structure of the request package the the client need to send the username for the message sending uh, is how um, how the package look like uh, you can indicate the list of the target and the message uh, when the server receive the message it will find out the receiver and forward the packet to receiver and this structure for receiver package uh, on the logic actually it's just in two function here yeah. okay uh, user when it register is how you write out the code it's very simple it's just a synchronous code here you just add into the memcache remember the user username and mapping with the client connection and here's how you send a message okay well let's look back to the demo mm. okay uh, first uh, let's do some stretch uh, let's add more uh, pressure on the server uh, maybe uh, mess a few thousand connection maybe I have 10 thread each thread 1000 uh, yeah, 10 thread each thread we try to uh, uh, this thread we try to uh, make 1000 connection okay okay the, the CPU high let's see how many uh, connection we have Let's start INT. Uh, the server is in a, a port one a a zero. Okay, we have ten thousand connection here. So the server have a ten thousand connection. You see, uh, it's not big problem on the server right now. Uh, let's try to uh, bring the client back. Once more, I, I bring one client. I register username like. Uh, P1 okay the server return okay you register successfully uh, I bring another client maybe I register with P2 okay now let's try to send a message to B1 B1 no. yeah uh, the B1 can receive okay let's do more uh, stress on on the server now server have 10,000 concurrent connection everything still okay let's try okay in this uh, testing we try to uh, have a few sender and try to send as much as possible uh, message to a server and we have one receiver to see how many packets the server can handle uh, maybe we have 10 sender is sender send 600 okay it's successfully registered let's wait for a while to see okay we can handle around five hundred messages per second in the receiver and let's look the server okay the CPU is just uh, slightly higher it's still very good uh, okay uh, the connection yeah still uh, we still can maintain 10,000 actually it can maintain up to 100k and if we use like uh, the lighter uh, command or better network we can get around 1000 TBS okay so um, no. so that's bring me to the end of my presentation yeah. okay thanks so I open for any questions. No question. So if you have uh, further question, you can send me an email. Yeah, or you can check out the demo code in my GitHub. So here. Okay, thanks.